G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru. Welcome to me live video tutorial today. It's gonna to be me showing you how to paint a uh, panoramic ocean beach scene on a beautiful panoramic style of a canvas board. This is a um, stretch canvas and it's something I've been wanting to do for quite a while. Um, just There we go, I'm just bringing up the um, live feed here so I can see who's in the room. We've got 10 people there so far, that's good. Right, now if you're watching the live feed, let me know you're here and um, acknowledge everybody else as well and tell us where you're from and have a bit of fun. And you can ask some questions if you like. Uh, when I'm doing a live tutorial though, not every question will obviously get answered. Um, but I've got to bring this over here now, sorry, bear with me a minute. Um, but I try my best. Okay, boom. Right, we'll get this there. <clears throat> got some paints. All right, I'm ready to rock and roll. So as I said, um, I've got this nice stretch canvas. I went to a friend's house the other day and they gave me a lot of leftover canvases they're not using and I'll, I'll put them to use. So I want to um, make, to me, um, these panoramic ones uh, make a beautiful beach scene, ocean scene, some sort of water cliff scene, things like that. I reckon they turn out great on a panoramic. I've got my hydrolite here. All right, we can put that down there. Now I'm just gonna get myself set up while you're all the way over there watching all the busy stuff around me here because it's better than just looking at a close up of me palette, isn't it? Now we're gonna need a few things, me flow white, me retarder, Couple of brushes, have I got that one there? Yep, there we go, couple of brushes. And I've got me paints pretty much laid out here, ready to go. Who we got in the room here? Uh, okay, we've got Celeste, we've got CK, we've got R, R Nath, Pat, Brickhouse, g'day Brickhouse, Anne, or Anna, Patricia, uh, Carla, g'day Carla, Kathleen, Sarah Shack, g'day Sarah Shack. Hi all feel like it's been forever. Yes, it does, doesn't it? All right, so we're gonna do a beautiful painting of a, um, what did I call it? It's gonna be a, a beachscape on a panoramic, panoramic view. All right, so what do I need? I'll get all this ready. <clears throat> oh, now, and I'm gonna mask up. The horizon line, because I don't really want the um, retarded paint going in the water there. So pretty much about there. That'll do it. Something there. So I'm gonna do the top half, then we'll do the bottom half, and hopefully we can get this done within an hour. Marilyn Lynch, I'm anxious to see this. I have a canvas like that, and I don't know what to do with it. Well, now you do know what to do, don't you? Hey, Marilyn Lynch, get your lynch mob onto you procedures there and get in the art studio and start painting. Now I want about that much to... Now this canvas was not gesso primed, it was just raw cloth. So yesterday I primed it with gesso, white gesso, which is just like ceiling paint really. And now it's ready to rock and roll. So now I want to add my craft paint, student paint, poster paint, whatever you want to call it paint, but that's soft body paint with the retarder and I'm gonna prime that on there so I'm gonna get a beautiful sky, okay? It's gonna be simple, or something like this as well, you don't want it too busy, okay? Just a beautiful sky and a beautiful water and it'll sit up on the wall and it'll look shit out, all right? So come on over here, what do we got there? Hello from Geelong, g'day, Leslie Fox. Uh, we've got Vitroleth, g'day Ian, painting along with you, Bonnie from Ontario. All right, so let's get you over here. Just got to move me um, microphone cable. Oh, that was easy, wasn't it? All right, so there we are, get the bin out the way. I'm not gonna be able to whack a frame on this one because it's, um, let's get you down there a bit. Now, I need some room here. Right, where are we? It's 18 minutes past nine here. So we'll see how we go for time. Okay, down here, I'm mixing up that craft paint 
with the retarder. I've got to remember to move the camera as well. So I'm just mixing it with my two inch putter on a flat synthetic brush from the hardware. All right. And we ain't gonna muck around, we're gonna get right into this, all right? So before we do, uh, I'll leave it on there. I'm gonna, oh, it's just my glasses that fell down. I'm just getting the edge done first because I'm gonna wrap this around. It's a um, quite a thick canvas, it's about, oh, I don't know, two inches, two inch, one inch thick. Now I'm just crisscrossing this retarded student poster craft paint onto the canvas there, getting it right into that tooth. Don't worry about the chunks and bumps in your paint at the moment. You're gonna artistically get rid of them later on. It's a matter of having confidence in every stroke as you go. Okay, we've got the paint on there like so. Now we're just going to brush it nice. Okay, too easy. All right, now I'm going to wipe this brush. Um, so I'm just going to do it on my rag down here. Don't have to, I don't have to wash it. Okay, I've, I've just wiped it. Now come down here. And yes, I've gone live again. I've got nothing in my files to upload and haven't got anything edited. I've been busy, so we're going to get our sky colours down there now. So I'm going to use Cerulean Blue. Uh, get on there, you silly. See that paint lid's full of paint. Cerulean Blue. I want a bit of quinacridone magenta. I'll put that over there. Um, and I want some... Mid-tone grey, I'll put that here. And I want some titanium white. Is that it? Yeah, lucky I bought a new tube the other day. All right, I'm gonna get as much as I can out of that tube because I hate wasting that white. I should have bought two, I only bought one tube. Okay, get that back down there. Now, It's Annie Perth and Pin PM in us. Okay. Oh, I'm PM in the US. Oh, AM in Perth. Oh, I'll get you. <laughs> yes. Our AM is America's PM. Now, I'm going to get the sky colour. So I'm using cerulean blue. This is going to be pretty much real colours in this one. So I want the sky blue and coming down to a duller colour blue. So let's get all this up there. And before I do, I'm going to, you've got to bear with me here. I've got to get this bit painted as well. Otherwise we're going to have trouble. If I don't do it as I go, I'm going to be in trouble. There we go, that'll do. All right, back into it. Now I'm going to crisscross this down into that white. So it's very pale at the bottom. And now I'm going to quickly just do the sides there as well. There we go. I'll come over here and do this side as well. I'm not that fussed on how neat the side is because it's a piece of art and art can be brush strokey and different ways, you know. Now I've got the blue on there the way I want. Now I'm going to stroke it and get all those brush strokes out until I come down to the bottom. Okay, I'm massaging it. Listen to it rub into those teeth on that canvas. Doesn't that sound good, eh? I don't know if you can hear it or not. I better get some blue paint there. Take your time whenever you're doing any painting. Um, if you ever see a tutorial guy rushing or a lady rushing, it's because they're under the pump a bit, but you don't have to be under the pump. 
That's beautiful. We've got a nice tone there. Okay, I'm gonna wipe this brush again. Okay, a little patch from the field in a wire. Sending shout out and love. I would have left it and called it clouds. All right. Now we're gonna get some other colors in the sky there. Um, come down here. I've got some quinacridone magenta here. Just the very little bit of it. Now if I overdo it with this, I can blue it back, but you don't need too much. Now I'm gonna have a, a row of clouds along here and I want them absorbing some of this warmth and gray colors as well. So I wanna get this all the way along about there. Now I wanna crisscross this down to the horizon line over here and then sort of spurs it up into the blue as well. We've got a light haze of that quinacridone magenta. Sometimes I call that the pollution. All right, you can see what that's done. Now I've got to wash this brush, I think. Where am I up to now? Oh yes, we're up to the clouds. So I'm just gonna wash that brush. So as when I'm ready for the water, it's ready to go again. Now I need a couple of fan brushes here because we're just going to do the clouds and I'll come over here and grab some blending brushes. Now with your blending brushes, make sure you've got something to wipe them straight away. Come back down here. Hello Lynn, Lynn Barker, g'day, how are you? Jackie, g'day. Now, we've done everything. We want the titanium white on its own. And we're gonna make some clouds in the sky. All right, so let's get, we'll start from maybe here. I'm coming within, because I want to blend this down. It's going to pick up all those colors. All right. Now grab a blending brush. And I want to blend that down to the horizon line now, okay? Where's the tape? There it is there. So I've got to get that right down to the horizon line. Now, like I said, wipe your brush as you go. Wipe your brush as you go. Pull that out the back there, there like that. I'm wiping that brush. I'm wiping it off. There's a towel hanging on the camera caddy there. So that's why the camera was probably wobbling. Now I'm going to just tickle the tops there a bit, just a little bit. All right. Now I'm going to do the same. So I need to wash that brush, rinse it, dab it on a paper towel. I'm going to pick up some more um, white and we'll probably put something here. I'm leaving enough to blend down to the horizon line, okay? And I hope everything works out here. I'll go to about there. From about halfway in the cloud, wipe it. turmoil, pull it right down to the horizon. Why I put that quinacridone magenta, it's mixing in with this white here. Tickle the tops a little bit. I 
I don't like the way this is here. I want it to sort of flare up there a bit more. There we go. Now I've got to wash that brush again. Rinse it. Wipe it. And we'll get something here. Pretty much all the way along the bottom of the canvas horizon line, or just above the horizon line, sorry. Let me get you over here a bit more. Same again. Wiping it from just underneath the top, pulling it down to the bottom. I'm twisting the brush all over the place. Yeah, you could probably, if it looks like it's raining, you could probably make it look like it's raining out in the ocean there. Okay, we've done that. Wash that brush. And then I want to pick up some more white. Oh, I might want something just over here. that up the top there a bit there we go now we're going to put a bum on this because it's over our head a little bit pull that pull it and pull it give it a bit of a bum the bottom I call it a bum but it's the bottom the bottom of anything is a bum twist that tickle the tops it's all flat one dimension at the moment don't worry about that uh, we'll try and get something over here, whispering away. Just something very subtle. Just like that. There. Now we've got that grey on the palette down here. So we're gonna need to wash this brush. I'm gonna wash it again. Golly, a lot of washing involved in this. Um, oh, hang on a minute. I've got the smaller one here. Let me pick this one up. Now we're going to add the um, weather within those clouds. So I'll get that top one out the way first. So from the bottom, I like to pretty much come from the bottom and finger, put little fingers up within it like that. Bits here and there. Just like that. Grab yourself a completely another completely different blending brush and softly sit that grey within there. Now this is a mid-toning grey, it's not a dark grey, you don't want it too dark otherwise your, your clouds, when that grey dries it'll be very dark and you'll be sort of like, oh no, what do I do? You always got to remember if you're a beginner, acrylics dry that bit darker. I've sat that down in the white <coughs> And now we're going to do something similar to the bottom. So we might get some stuff. Now, if anything, it's all at the bottom. So we're thinking fluffy. We're thinking pillow. We're, we're putting, see I'm putting like bits here and there. See what i just done? You squint your eyes, you can already see what that's going to do. Um, so now we want to disperse that up into the white. Do a bit at a time as well, like that retarder is going to allow this to stay wet longer, but I'm feeling how dry it actually is. See, there's a lot of paint building on my brush. I've got to wipe it again. Where do I find your paintings for sale? I have looked and can't find them. Um, Go in the links in the description below. This is live, so you're watching, they're not in this one yet, but go to one of my other videos, open another tab, and th there's links in the bottom below my videos. And there's a link that says art available for sale or art for sale, and you can find them there. So now we're gonna get some more gray here. I'll do about that much there. 
Which one was I using this one? So we've got that magenta in there. It adds some real warmth colors in the sky. Now we're adding the actual, um, what do you call this? The wet, I call it the weather. It's probably got some other name for it, but I call this the weather, putting the weather in the clouds. Pull the camera along a bit more over here so you can see there. And you, you can see what I'm doing. I'm just pushing it within that white in an artistic way so you don't see any deliberate hard brush edges. Because this is, we want this to look a reasonably realistic. Okay, you've got the second part of the cloud. Now the last bit, the third, the third bit, which is the third um, dimension, which will give it those, um, that 3D kind of flavor. I'm just trying to get the rest of the white paint out of my tube there. Come on. I'll just wash that brush. Rinse it, dry it. Now this is the third bit. You, you've cleaned that brush. And you're gonna pick up some white. Now this is the yumminess. Is there a way to remove excess paint after it dries on a canvas? Probably try scraping it there, Francis. <sighs> now. We've got white, the yumminess, see the cloud here? We've got the white, the grey. Now we're going to add some just specks of yumminess. Grab yourself another blending brush, something that's not dirty, and then softly sit that yumminess down so you still see the vibrancy of it over those other colours. And you've mixed it with the grey and the other white there. How's that looking? Get rid of some deliberate strokes there. And we just keep doing that now. Thank you very much, Brickhouse67, for that super chat donation. Much appreciated. Now we're in this grey here, we're doing some more yumminess. Put it on there. Leave the vibrancy, but tone it down, sit it down within that grey now. And when it's all done, you'll see, oh yeah, they look like clouds. And we're just doing this all the way along. When I get here, my hand won't be in the way as much. It's just yumminess, I call this. And give it some turmoil, give it some realism movements, like that. See it? You practice this and you can paint clouds so the cows come home. Well, I thank you very much for those thumbs up there, Mona. I'll go all the way along here. Get this done. There we go, look at that. Now we're getting a bit, it's, it's looking quite a bit dotty here, so I'm gonna just try and hide some of that a bit more. See what I'm doing? Play with things. Play with things. Now that row of clouds on the horizon, that could have been way higher and fluffier. I just wanted them like that. That's all I wanted them like. We just got something else in the sky there as well. How's that looking? Yeah, that's not too bad. I wouldn't mind now, just for that sense of realism, I'm washing that small fan brush that I just put that on with, because I want to get some of the gray and the magenta here. See, I didn't use much magenta there. I'll pull some more grey in it. There we go, there we go, there we go. Just to get that flavour going. The depth. Where's the tape? The very bottom. Very bottom of that. Now this is just adding that more sense of realism in there. 
within the colours of the clouds. Okay, way down at the bottom of the horizon line. I can just see the tape there, so this doesn't need any yumminess on it. This is just going to blend down to that horizon line. Something so when the water's hitting the bottom of the um, clouds over there on the horizon, it's going to give it depth. Well, hopefully it is. Thank you very much there, Verda Dirth. Whatever, how do you pronounce your name? Looking very great there, she said. Or he, he or she. Some names, you don't know if you're a male or a female, really, do we? Okay, where are we? You can see what that's done, that magented grey. All along here, it's just a different warmer grey at the bottom of the cloud there. Right, I'm getting ready to pull that tape off now because this is starting to clam up. What I mean by clamming up, it's getting dry now, it's had its run. I would not have been able to do this in acrylic if I didn't have that craft paint underneath with the retarder. Okay, now what I want to do is pull this tape off. Where are we? Let me find the edge of it. There it is. I want to pull it off. And so I do not have a hard line when I'm putting my water on there, I'm going to just grab a, I don't know, a small flat and just get rid of any hard edge that's there. You know, like a lip. Sometimes when you pull your tape off, I've done it before, and you see this ridge underneath your painting. Now hopefully this is gonna work. It's working, yeah. I'm just pulling that along. So bear with me a minute, eh? Bear with me. All right, that'll do it. I'll just go to the bit on the edge there, so we don't have a line there. Cool. I love it when Ian shows this, shows us those special techniques. Oh, thank you very much. I don't mind showing them. Now look, we've got a reasonable sky. We've got that See what that magenta's done just out there in the distance? And we've got the weather underneath. Now, I've got to get rid of some of um, these brushes on my palette here. I'll just show you what I'm doing on the palette down here. Um, washing that. And I need to wash these blending brushes before Come over here with me before they go hard. All right, I'll do this one as well. So if you're watching the replay, there are links in the description below. Check them out. There's a link to show you what paintings are available for sale. All my paintings of purchase are done through PayPal. There's a PayPal link there. I need to do this now because I've got no one else to do it for me and if I finish doing the painting live these brushes could set with hard bits of painting. Don't want that. Oh. All right. Okay. Let me just see if I can see anyone that needs those clouds. Are fantastic, Ian. Thank you very much. Far out. Watch you a lot. Learn a lot. Good stuff, Woody. Woody, is it Broom? Karen, g'day, Karen. All right, now, come down here. 
we need some, what do you call it? Where is it here? Here we go. I got some phthalo turquoise, turquoise, just turquoise. And we'll see if we've got enough of this. I'll put it here. Now, and I've got Listen to me grunt and groan. <clears throat> um, that's going to be the sand. That's going to be the water. Um, I'm going to have to grab my new tube of white because I'm running out of the other one. And we need some more white down here. And the turquoise, we want a darker bit of turquoise for the top. I'm going to use this brush here. Let's just see if we can get this done. Oh, actually, bugger me stupid. I'll blow dry that so I can put some tape there. I shouldn't really put tape there because, no, I won't. I don't want a hard focused line on the horizon line. I wanted it just soft. Okay, it doesn't have to be a hard focused line. Give that a bit of a dry anyway. That'll do. Um, what I want is some clean water on me brush here. And I'm just wetting this dry canvas a bit. So when I put this paint on, it's going to move. Now, some of you might just ask, why didn't you just spray it with your spray bottle in? I could have done, but those of you that know, if dots of water hit this paint up the top there, it's going to leave white dots. And it'll look not good. Okay, so now I want to get the thinnest out there. Oh, let's start over here. That brush is too soft. I'm gonna to have to use that two inch putter on a brush. That'll be more direct. What I'm doing is getting the horizon edge against those clouds. You wanna try and keep it straight. <clears throat> Just so it looks right. If it's a little bit on the crooked side, it'll just give it that kind of, hmm, something just didn't happen right there sort of feeling about it. So we're getting this right up to those clouds there. I'll just wet the brush a bit more, see how it's moving a bit more. Because the very distance out here needs to be just that bit dark. Oh, wow, look at that. Get it right up there. I don't want a bit of white under there. I want it looking like those clouds are over the edge of the horizon there. Oh, yay, said Ray. I'll just quickly come around the side there as well, just like that. pick a -boo. you can't see what I'm doing there, but you know what I'm doing. All right, and over here as well. This has just got to be done. All right. Now we've got that bit of the water done. Let me just... There's no retarder in this. There we go. I'm going to do the sides later. Now that is nice and dark the way I wanted it. Now we get the paint. I've got some water there. I've put some water on there for the brush. I want to come about to here with it. That's where the water's going to be. But I need it to, let's get some more darker bits in there. Wet your brush a bit more. 
just so it's gonna move across that canvas. Now that's very watery. I don't want it that watery. I'm gonna put some more paint on top of it. I'm sorry I can't read any comments. I'm a bit busy at the moment. Now, I'm just gonna pick up some of the white to brighten the value of that. And I want some lighter areas within this water as well. So it's just not all one black color. I'm gonna wipe that brush into a brag, paper towel, whatever. This is just simple beach ocean water. And now I'm going to pull it just like that. All right, done. Now, I'm just sort of periodically coming down here. It's getting lighter. I'll do the edge later. I wanna come, get a bit more on your brush again. I wanna come down here like that. Just periodically, unevenly. too much. There we go. A bit more white there. Because the shallower you come you wanted a I wanted a bit lighter. And out there it's very deep. Alright. Now I've got to just clean this brush. Um, getting the um, now we want some of these yellow oxide bring it over here actually get some white in it get some white in there I want it way wider than that much whiter than that This is going to be their sand colour. You want it reasonably a bit lighter again. Wow. That'll do. I think that's going to do it. You see that? Yeah. Oh, I just have to have some blue. Get the, the sand colour painted to the blue first. Okay. Or the, the turquoise. Just like so. Just like so. Okay, you don't have much in your brush now. And start teasing those two colours together. Get a bit more there just so I can get some there. There we go. Watch what this does. When this is sunken down in the water, this is going to create shallow going into the deep. I'll try and keep it artistically level with the painting itself. There's a bit of weirdness going on here. Oh, there we go. What is that? Is that a, oh, it's something on the um, canvas? A floor in the canvas stitch. Now I've got to wash this brush. Oh, hopefully that didn't pull out the um, microphone. Why am I pulling that lead all the time? Now I want some more white, so what I'm going to do, because that sand's still not quite, I'll just get some near there, just get some 
of this white. Can you see what I'm doing? Getting that a lot more pale. And hopefully I've still picked up some of the, oh no, it's not, I thought I had the turquoise in it. You don't want the turquoise in this if you can help it. There we go. Just, yeah, get some more paler aspects in this beach sand. There we go, beautiful. That'll do. Now everything's wet, that's how you want it. What have we got there? 83 people. Who was your mentor? Well, I didn't really have a mentor. I watched a couple of people years ago on YouTube. Um, but I wanted to paint. I was driven to want to paint when I discovered it. And yeah. And now we want, we've got the white, I need to put more white on the canvas, not on the canvas, on the palette here. So what we need now is some white and we want some flat brushes and maybe this will do. I've just got a flat brush. I'm going to pick up some white. Now look on your canvas where you've got some dark areas. This is something you can paint along. A, a, a beginner can paint this in their own way, an advanced beginner can even paint this, all right? Look for some dark areas in your painting and, I don't know, we'll try here. I'm just going to come along. We've got water there. This, this are breakers. Nice and thin, come out to nothing. Okay. Get some more. something breaking here just like that get it nice and level fade away to nothing this is just something simple okay now grab another brush that's quite clean and tidy and if you want see over here what we've done let me so I can get over there You want to just blur the bottom bit. Oh, it's very wet, so let's stamp it. Blur the bottom bit into the ocean there. Just like that. This is just subtle. Like I said in the beginning, we want things minimal in this, but it's going to look oceany. The same over here. We'll, we'll make that into a wave just out there crashing down a bit. Wipe your brush. Wipe it. See how it's gone all faded there? And over here. Now what you need is probably another brush because you want to get what, what what you've just done there I'm just using a line or something that I can find to do what I want it to do um, well this is a bit weird how can I do this you want bright white on the top of that now but but it's pretty far out so I might be able to get away with that some here. What's over there? I think I want some over here as well. I'm just going to wipe that first brush, pick up the paint again, and get something. Is the camera over there? No. I'll just get something. Crashing out here, going to nothing. Bit more. Mm. 
ปิดโอ้น้ำมันไฟน์สเปรย์เวทสติลผมกำลังจะหาว่ายว่าที่มันตั้งอยู่นั่นผมจะเอาไฟล์นี้ไปรองรับแล้วผมมีไฟล์สกรัมเบลล์ที่ผมใส่ไปผมต้องการจะสกรัมเบลล์นี้ไปต่อไปจะเห็นว่ามีการแอดิทชันในน้ำแข็งแล้วก็เอาไฟล์ที่ผมใช้ก่อนและเอาไฟล์ที่ไปเวอร์เอาซาวีเราพูดอีกหน่อยอาจจะทายชินอะไรอย่างเงี้ยเพียงสักหน่อยเพียงสักหน่อยเพียงสักหน่อยเพียงสักหน่อยเพียงสักหน
Ah, yeah. And then you slowly... Just doing that. Is my hand in the way? No. Leave the bottom edge sharp. Don't disturb that bit. It ruins the illusion. And see what's happening is um, this colour here of the sand that I put in earlier. Remember I told you? Now it looks like it's under the water. Now we can just do another bit here. Get some more on your brush. You want that nice hard line at the edge there. And then come back in there like that. And the same again. Leave that bottom edge nice and sharp. You're scrumbling this, but in left and right movements, east to west. Okay? Pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? You can even add dark colours of seaweed floating in this washed up surf if you wanted to. I've got to wash that brush because it's starting to get a little bit on the contaminated side. So just bear with me a minute while I wash that out. And I need some more white on the palette as well because you always got to keep conditioning your paint and your brush if you're getting contaminated just so as it's not doing that in your art piece. Now I just picked up some more and we're going to come around here. Get some more nice and sharp there. Bit of agitation here. Agitation there. Got that scrumbling brush. Where are we? Here we go. Let's go again. If you feel your paint's a little bit on the wet side, you can get your hair dryer and give it a quick blow. Well, I'm going to wipe my brush because it's getting... Yes, I will be doing the sides of the canvas here. I'll probably do that off camera because it takes too much time and effort while I'm live to muck around with it. But I'm going to, on, on this canvas here, it's going to have the sides painted as well. How's that looking? Now, get some good clean white and let's add some more. Watch this. Nice and sharp at the bottom. And we've got a second incoming of foam just washing back as well. Leave the bottom half tight and scrumble all that back. Yeah, that's working fine. I need to wash that brush again. You've got to keep washing that brush. So every time you're picking up white paint, it's nice and white. I might do something. Where are we? About here. I want a bit more here. Get that bottom line nice and tight there. You don't want fingers hanging down, you want that straight. If anything, I'll get some more on there. Just get rid of that weird edge. Now, same again. Keep the bottom side tight and scrumble the top half of it left and right. This, doing this is a procedure I'm telling you within itself just to practice if you want to learn how to do water washing onto the sand. I mean, I'm not the greatest beach ocean artist out there, but I am what I am, and it's something a beginner can learn. And once you've adopted your habits and you've become a seasoned artist, you can flourish from there on end. Okay, how's that looking? Whoops. And if anything's too bright, you can always get the darker colours and darken it back up. But that's looking like water has washed onto the sand. Uh, what do we got here? 
Woody, do you paint a green Marie? You make it look so easy to use a fan brush. Um, what else am I wanting there? I feel I'm going to grab that scrumbling brush because I want some thicker. It's a little bit antsy pantsy there. So what I want, I'm going to grab some of this. Let's just see. Hopefully I don't bugger it. Uh, we'll try about here. I want more foam, more frothy. Let me just look at that. Yeah, not too bad. Maybe a bit here frothing up. It's just froth. Imagine living at the beach. You and your wife Barbara at home. Barbara, I'm going out the front. What for? Oh, I want to go and watch the froth. There we go. What's that looking like there? Hmm. That'll be all right. Some of this just needs some yumminess. Now, do I just add a palm in there or do I leave it? We've been going for just about an hour now. Now the paint's not toxic and a lot of people do ask me uh, why do I wear gloves? I just like to peel them off at the end of the day and um, have no paint on my hands. And um, also it's, it's, it's just looks good for filming purposes as well. I'm just, I'll do that later. I'm just doodling around the, the edges here. Uh, a bit of paint there. Yeah, I'll do that later. I'll do that. That's going to take too long. I don't want to gin around like that. Would be pretty with a palm in front. All right, here we go. Let's put a bloody palm in there. We'll just put one. Where's my sky? I've got something there, so I'm going to have to have it coming on this side of the sky. Now, I'm going to do the palm in all its natural colours, but I might have to detail it later with fine detail when the actual painting's finished, just so I have time to give it more pizzazz. Okay, so what we need is, um, I want my, excuse me, head for a minute there, burn umber. All these brushes here are just there, they can be done like that. I want some burn umber, there we go. Okay, so we got some burn umber. We want some. Where's the bloody green? There it is, all the way over there again. And we're going to need some cad yellow light. That's a really yellow cad yellow light. Didn't I buy more of that, Ian? Probably not, but anyway. I'm going after. All right, now for my palms, I like to use a um, a flat brush. Uh, so I'll find the appropriate flat one. Uh, we need a bit of water on the paint there, so we'll give that a bit of a doobry like that. I'll move that brush out the way. I don't need that. Uh, let's find a palm a palm brush. I probably had one here. Yes, I did. The one I used in the water. So I'll clean that, wipe it. Now, I'm just going to start with the brown. Is that on there? Yeah, of course it is. Get this over there. And the best way to map in a palm is I'm going to come, say, from here. Okay, put a dot there. And I want it, let's say, up about here, okay? So what you do, or what I do, you could start from there and just come down and then get fatter as you come to that point. Look at that point as you're going to it and you can't go wrong, bang, okay? 
Now I want it a little bit fatter. So we'll start from here again. A little bit fatter. There, that's about fat enough, I reckon. Okay, colour it in. Now I didn't dry it enough because it's pulling the watercolours through here, but that's fine because I've got to add some other values into this palm, which is, I want a bit of grey. Can you see what I'm doing there? I've just picked up some of the grey over there. Oh, more grey, don't want too much of that. If anything, that um, palm trunk is that grey colour. I'll do it over here. There we go. Oh, come on. Okay. This is just to me more of a real colour. I'll give that a bit of a dry just so it's not going to mud up. dark in this it's not quite but it's broken up it's scratchy and teary which is what I wanted oh, now I'm going to get some of the I'll get some of that just where are you The burn number that I put on was the base coat for this. Now I'm going to grab some of the burn number again, like that. A bit darker, point it up a bit. Of course, I want this side a bit. Darker, but I want it all like dotty, like that. Just trying to go for that realism colour within it here and there, you know. Probably up here too. Well, I might have some shade on the trunk up here because some of the prongs are going to be falling past it, so. That'll create shade. There we go. That'll do. Now I will use um, the yellow ochre that I grabbed and some of that burn umber. Well, a bit too much, so let's go over here now. Yeah, I've got that dead wood colour. Wet it a bit more. It's sort of like a goldy green. Well, where are we? Can't even see. <laughs> There we go, sorry about that. Now what I'm going to do is just map in the beginnings of me trunks, not me trunks, me palm prongs with this colour. And if anything, I've got it like the winds sort of hit it. Uh, we'll come this way, we get one up here. Boom, that way. Get some more that way. Let's go up there a bit more. Oh. 
this is just, a lot of this is going to be covered. Now I'm grabbing some of the green. I didn't even wipe the brush or nothing there. And I want to get some of the brown with that, just the dirty greeny brown, just to give it some loose legs. Every palm needs some loose legs. So we'll give him some loose legs from about here. Whoa, where are we? <laughs> See, it's, it's not green green, it's... There we go. Now grab this paint. because palm prongs, they have that dead growth within them as well. That's what the yellow and the brown did. Now we got that, now you have gotta busy it up a bit. So get the middle a bit busy. And you can probably give it some little pointy bits out there as well. I already painted Aria Grande last night. You missed that one. Okay. Now back down here, I've just got to wash that brush. and give that a bit of a dry up there. So I want to grab the, the green, forest green now. My canvas is 300 millimetres or 30 centimetres by 60 centimetres or 600 mil, 30 by 60. Now we're giving this some um, depth. Wow, what I put so much paint on my palette for. Okay, now what I'd like to do is just brighten it up a little bit. So I'm going to grab some more yellow. Cadmium yellow light it is, of course. And I'm going to mix it with the um, some forest green here. Where are we? Can you see there? Yeah, just to give it some highlighted green foliage within all that mumble jumble we got up there. And look here, you want to see what frongs are in front and what are behind. I'm kicking a bit more yellow in there. Bit more yellow. More yellow there. Where did that little scrumbling brush go? There we go. Now I'm just grabbing that and I 
might need to be darker. I'm just putting those darker bits back in there to hide all that sh stuff. <laughs> I nearly said shit then. There we go. Now what colour is that? That's pretty much... Where are we? Can you see my hand? Yeah. This is just a... Uh... Shadow. <laughs> Couldn't get the word out. Shadows make a difference in a painting, eh? Um, if you can work them out where they've got to go, they really make a difference within a painting. They give it that realistic um, aspect, the bullshit aspect. Now, in the water's a bit different. How's that looking in the monitor? Yeah, it looks like a shadow. I'm just sort of getting some sort of absorbed shadow here. There we go. All right, uh, what have we got there? Jennifer is from Pennsylvania, Night All. Um, about where, says someone. Uh, Brick, oh, I love the shadow. Hello, everyone from Pennsylvania. Carol Cara. Hope everyone is doing well. Yeah, I hope everyone's doing well. Now, I'll give this a bit of an autograph. So, what colour shall I autograph it with? Uh, where are we? I might do it over this side because it's easier for the camera. And what colour? I'm just going to use some of that colour I used for the shadow. But I'll get it nice and inky first. Now be sure if you are watching the um, replay of this live, check out the links in the description below. This painting will be for sale. All my other paintings are for sale. They're all done through PayPal. There's a PayPal link there. It's also a link for people who like to give donations and support my content. It's much appreciated through there as well because all my tutorials are free content. Okay. Now with this one, because it's not my normal canvas size, if someone wants to buy this, message me on Facebook and I've got to work out the postage because it's a lot heavier than normal. All right, there we go. I can't whack a frame on this because um, I don't have one big enough, but there you go. We've got a, where are we? A panoramic ocean scene. I'm going to do the sides later on. We've got a beautiful sky. We've got the ocean coming towards us, just flopping onto the sand there. Nothing too over busy with rocks and big crashing waves. It's just simple. And we've gone and put a somewhat of a palm tree there. Okay. Hope you like that. Let's pull back over here. So as I can acknowledge a few of you all before we say goodbye in these weird COVID times, eh? Where's my drink? Looks amazing as always. Thank you very much. Who said that? Dawn. Woody Voom. Great Ian, thank you. Thank you very much. Les Knight, thank you very much. Brilliant. It's beautiful, beautiful. Oh, I missed it. You can always watch the replay if you missed the, missed the live. And like I said, check out the links in the description below. There's about nine or ten there. And they can, if you're a regular follower of mine, a lot of those links can help you out in many ways, all right? Yeah, so I'll have to paint the sides of this. I'll take a photo of it and use it as a thumbnail. And don't forget, if you like what I'm doing, you tell your friends and your family. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, all right? 
All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on ya. Right oh, what we got there? We got all sorts of business to. Golly. This is gonna be, this is gonna be fun doing that, eh? I never do like doing this sides here, but it is what it is. It is what it is. Nothing more, nothing less. Where are we? That side. I sort of got that. Ah, oh, you're just gonna stuff it, you idiot. Got that done. Where are you? Oh, can't even see. And then I need. Luckily, I saved some of these colours here. I was just gonna scrape them all off. I'm going to need some of that for down there as well, just to trinkle into the sand there and over here. Whew. I think I might do the bottom black just to add shadow there. Who knows? Who knows? Is that looking all right or stupid? There we go. Hey, I wonder if you painted that black or would it look stupid? I don't know. Good night and God bless. Thank you so much, Ian. It's the first time I found you live. Good stuff, Louise. All right, I better turn this camera off. And it's Uru from The Guru.